If you guys have a four stroke, four cycle engine on your equipment, you're gonna have a carburetor on it that looks really similar to this, if not this exact one. It has a float bowl on the bottom of it like that. You start filling your fuel tank up with fuel and all of a sudden you're seeing gasoline just pouring out of your carburetor. Most of the time it's on the air filter side and it's clear to see that because it's making a mess and it's draining all over the place. Sometimes though, it will flood through on the other side of the carburetor on your engine side and uh, you can't really clearly see that. But what it does is it's draining through into your engine oil. It raises the level of your engine oil up and your engine oil smells like gasoline now. No matter what side of that carburetor it's flooding through on, the problem in this carburetor is the same. If that's your symptom, you guys, you're definitely watching the right video if you have a Briggs & Stratton or a Tecumseh. If you have anything else other than a Briggs or a Tecumseh, uh, it's a little different. I got a quick link up here for you in the information button to get back to a video to show you how to do this on pretty much everything else but a Briggs or a Tecumseh. Today I'm gonna to show you why that's happening and how you can fix it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Steve Small Engine Saloon again. Thanks for tuning in. Oh yeah, my website right there, .com. I got a quick link up here for you in the information button too if you want to get back to my website. I really think you're going to like our website when you go look at it. Nothing goes better with a carburetor job like this than Grolsch beer, man. However, I have actually heard that some people will do this job using other beers. I've never tried it myself. Why don't you put some comments down right underneath this video and tell me what beer you prefer to accomplish a carburetor job. Now, I know that a lot of you guys and girls out there kind of understand how a four-stroke, four-cycle carburetor works. Just in case you don't, though, I want to throw this in there. Don't laugh at me till this is done because this is going to make sense when I'm finished this. A lot of you guys and girls understand how your toilet works. The back tank on your toilet has a float and it's attached to a valve. When you flush your toilet, the water level drops down, flushes your toilet. Then that back tank starts filling up with water again. There's a float that floats on top of the water. And as the level's getting higher and higher, that float's getting higher and higher. And as it gets to the full part, it shuts a valve off in the back of your toilet so water just doesn't keep pouring in and flooding your toilet. That is the exact same concept as a four-stroke, four-cycle carburetor. I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to just pull that float off. Pretend that float right there is the back of your toilet. It fills up with fuel. As the level of the fuel in that uh, bowl gets higher and higher, it lifts that float up right there and the float floats and as it gets to the top it shuts the valve off in there so it doesn't flood out anymore and that is why right there it's as simple as that guys and girls it floods out it's because that needle in seat that float valve in that carburetor is not sealing it's not uh, coming together properly and sealing in there Briggs and & Stratton and Tecumseh have removable, replaceable needle and seats in them, especially that seat we're talking about. Not like a Honda-style carburetor where you can't replace the seat. Let's just pull this pin off. I'm going to show you what we're talking about right here. We pull that pin out. And don't lose that pin. Make sure that you keep that somewhere safe. But then when you pull that float off right there like that, the needle comes out. And you'll see that that needle is, there's no rubber or Viton tip on that. It's just a steel metal tip on that. It meets down into the seat, which is a rubber seat, if you can see that. Sometimes they're brown, sometimes they're red, sometimes they're green. But it is a clearly a replaceable seat. Now, you can buy these 
They are cheap, guys. This is the this is a Briggs and Stratton carburetor right here. So we got a Briggs and Stratton needle and seat kit. If you guys want to get one of these kits, they are so inexpensive. Look right down underneath this video. I have a description down there, and there's links there for you to go check these things out. Uh, there's there's Briggs and Stratton and there's Tecumseh's. That's what's the problem right there. It's warped, it's swollen up from old ethanol fuel and whatever, and it's not sealing with that uh, needle anymore. We got to get that thing out of there. The easiest way to do that is an air compressor. Take a rag. You can use your hand, but it'll hurt. I'll show you why in a second. Right where, that ne right where that seat is down there, put a rag over that. <laughs> You'll see why. And there's your where your fuel line goes on. Take your air compressor, and this works most of the time. I actually don't know if this is going to work or not, but let's check it out. Oh, did you hear it? It just went pop. Look in that rag. There it is. It blew that little seat right out of there there it is now sometimes you guys that one worked great that's the way they usually work sometimes they're glued in there like they're really stuck bad little tiny carburetor uh, adjusting screwdriver something like that sometimes you got to get down in there and dig that thing out unstick it don't worry about damaging it because we're going to replace the thing so you get that seat out of there. That was actually pretty easy on this one. Now we open up the new kit. Needle and seat, new needle and seat comes out just like that. Now we have to insert the new seat into there. The easiest way to do this most of you guys have chainsaw files around or drill bits. Get the right size drill bit or chainsaw file. Use the, the, not the sharp end of the file and not the sharp end of your drill bit if you're using that. These make great insertion tools. Make sure that the end of it's really nice and clean though and make sure that it actually fits down that hole before you try this. That one fits perfectly. That's actually a 732nd file right there. So, now this seat, this is super important, you guys. You, there, there's a wrong way and a right way of putting this in. You have a 50-50 chance, 100% chance, if you just look at it really close. One side of it has a groove. You'll see a little ring, a groove around it like that. You flip it over and the other side has no groove. So what I do, this is the easiest way I've ever seen. You take your, uh, you back your drill bit or your chainsaw file, nice and clean, and just put the seat on there so you can see the groove. The groove is on the, on the top right there. Then take your carburetor and push that in just like that and a lot of times you'll actually feel it pop in there it's sealed in there now that's a brand new installed seat right there that worked great now when you take that new needle and put that on there you drop that on Put your pin back in. Now look at that. That is where you want it, right there. You lift that little float up and down like that and it's the float is level with the body of the carburetor now. That is exactly where you want that thing. You can test this before you slap everything back together again and put it on and try it and maybe it's still flooding through. You can test this thing. All you have to do is uh, take, take it and put it beside your unit Hook your line back up again, your, your fuel line back onto there, and just do this. Let that fuel line drain, and as you let that down, <clears throat> it's going to be flooding through. 
And then as you lift that up to level again, it stops flowing. If you do that when it's level, then that fixed the problem. It's not going to flood through anymore. There is one other thing I do have to bring up with you. That is if you have a Tecumseh, especially a Tecumseh. Where is that thing? Check this out. Some Tecumsehs come with a metal float. That one's plastic. If you have a plastic float, you don't need to worry about this. I have fixed thousands of these things in my life. I've never, ever, not one time, seen a plastic float leak. I'll tell you what I mean by that. That's a brass float off of a Tecumseh right there. Listen. That was right in front of my microphone. I hope you could hear that. If that's the case, that float is now heavy because it's full of gasoline or it has some gasoline there. It's not going to float properly on top, of the, uh, on top of the gasoline and work properly because it's too heavy. If you guys have that problem with a metal brass float on your Tecumseh or your Briggs, replace it with a plastic one. You can buy that exact same float, but it's plastic and you'll never have that problem again. Again, I have it right in my description underneath this video, a uh, link there for you to go and get that replaceable plastic one. Oh yeah, one last thing before we sign off here, guys. If you have a float, that has this little metal tab on it. Some to, most Tecumseh's and a few big Briggs and Stratton's out there have this little metal tab, right like that. You can actually bend that thing up and down like that to adjust the level of your float. Now what I mean by that is, if you take that carburetor and flip it upside down, that float should be level with the body of your carburetor. It should not be like this, and it should not be way down like that. It should be absolutely level. So that, some, like this one right here, this is a Briggs, doesn't have a bendable metal tab on it like that Tecumseh does. But you just bend that up and down till you get that thing level, and that's the way it should be right there. Well, I hope that saved somebody out there some money. I hope you liked that. Give me that thumbs up button if you liked it. Share this with your friends, subscribe to my channel, put some comments down if you got a better way to do this or if you have anything to say. Um, hey, you know what else? If you're doing this on a, on a Brig & Stratton or a Tecumseh carburetor, you might want to see a video on how to clean this thing from beginning to end. I got a video for you. I think you're going to like it. Boom. There it is right there. Click that video next to get back to that one. Until then, guys, Steve out.